Based upon a new study that was published in the journal Cell Reports, we have a pretty strong indicator of how we can build muscle and get longevity benefits at the same time. Because previously, these are two things that kind of oppose each other in a lot of ways. Now don't get me wrong, having muscle mass and having strength is a very large predictive indicator of longevity. We do know this, so having muscle on you is very good for multiple reasons. But the pure act of building muscle goes against the grain of some of these longevity things that we look at. Simple example, being in a caloric deficit. It's a little harder to build muscle, but being in a caloric deficit is very good for longevity in so many ways, but it's maybe not as good for building muscle. But the highlight of what we want to talk about today is more so surrounding autophagy. Autophagy is very good for longevity because autophagy is cellular recycling, cellular repair, where we break down unused or decrepit components of the cells and use them as fuel. This is very good at survival of the fittest at a cellular level, and it happens all the time, but when it's elevated, it's very good for us. But it's somewhat the opposite of building muscle. It really is, because building muscle, you really need autophagy to be turned off, because, well, it's just building muscle is mTOR and autophagy is AMPK. If you know what that means, I'll leave it there. If not, it's not important right now. But based on this newer literature, we've seen that high intakes of lean protein, okay, lean protein without a lot of fat, at one sitting can actually stimulate muscle protein synthesis, even in high amounts, without disrupting autophagy. So with this study in Cell Reports, we've learned that you can have high amounts of lean protein, still get lots of muscle protein synthesis, and not disrupt autophagy. This is really interesting, but there's more to it than just that. Now, I've talked about that other study before, okay? I mean, what that study, the Cell Report study, has found is that we used to think that you could only have like 25, 30, 35 grams of protein after a workout because the rest would just not get used, it would be wasted. Well, now that's not the case. Now it shows that you can have 100 grams of protein in one serving and you're going to assimilate it and you're going to get muscle protein synthesis out of it. It just happens over the long term. Huge news. Like, if someone is into, let's just say, for example, intermittent fasting, where they don't eat a whole lot of frequency, they eat like one meal or two meals a day, before a big concern was, oh, you're not gonna get enough protein, it's gonna be hard for you to build muscle, it's gonna be hard for you to survive, you know, yada, yada. Now that kind of goes out the window. Now someone can potentially fast for 24 hours, eat 150 grams of protein, and then not eat again for 24 hours and be perfectly fine as far as protein is concerned. As a matter of fact, based upon this literature, we can find that if you eat protein, you're not even potentially disrupting autophagy. Now, glucose, consuming carbohydrates, consuming high amounts of fat, anytime you have nutrients coming in like that, you're probably going to disrupt autophagy. But you have to kind of balance things out. Protein is ultimately very low calorie. So if you consume a high amount of protein, you're probably not putting yourself in so much of a surplus that you're kicking off autophagy. There's a lot of speculation as to why this is occurring, but I'm gonna read the quote from the study so that it makes sense. The ingestion of a single large amount of protein resulted in prolonged anabolism, that's muscle growth, muscle protein synthesis, without compromising whole body protein breakdown, without compromising muscle mTOR, that's signaling for growth, and without compromising markers of autophagy. That is, overall, our longevity piece we're looking at. So even when they had a huge chunk of protein after a workout, it didn't stop autophagy. Holy cow. So what is the best balance here? The best balance for building muscle and for longevity is allowing yourself to be in a caloric deficit that's really good for longevity, but then having your extreme bolus of protein allocated surrounding your workout. Because now we know when the signal for muscle growth is there from the workout, you can have 100 grams of protein, at least, possibly more, and still get all the benefit from all of that protein 
and be in a deficit and still get the longevity effect. I did a separate video, but I'll break down here too. What you wanna do is you wanna have a nice spike from something like a whey protein shake right after your workout, but immediately after that protein shake or even alongside it, have something that is going to be a more digestible protein, something that's gonna be maybe some meat, maybe some chicken, maybe some seafood, something like that. But the whey protein shakes or a plant-based shake or whatever it is you wanna have, just get that protein in, consolidate as much of your protein as you possibly can to that post-workout period so you get the most muscle growth at that period of time and then you can allow yourself to go into that deficit. I put a link down below for 30% off through Thrive Market because they have a bunch of different protein sources, they have a lot of different plant-based and regular whey protein shake options to choose from and a bunch of just protein-rich foods. So if you're consolidating your protein there, Thrive Market is the place. You can even sort by foods that are high protein with Thrive Market, but also I've got some options that I've created there. I've created my own nut butters. I've created my own truffles. Although I will say right after a workout, it's not the best time to have those. That might be for later in the day, but 30% off whatever you choose through Thrive Market. They even have sustainable meat and seafood options too. So this is cool and pretty groundbreaking. So you can get all that delivered to your doorstep for 30% off exclusively when you use my link down below in the top line of the description underneath this video, plus get a free $60 gift. So check them out afterwards. So this is what we used to think would happen. You'd work out and then you'd eat protein and it would stop the effects of your fast or it would stop the effects of your caloric deficit. But now we know that even when you're in a deficit, adding the protein in is going to still let autophagy do its thing. Now, this is pretty specific at the muscle level. There's also some evidence that suggests that having autophagy occurring at a muscle level actually results in healthier muscle tissue, muscle cells as well. Because remember, we want our muscle cells to be able to be efficient at using fuel. That's what's going to make them strong, make them effective, make them efficient cells. We don't want them to be unhealthy because then they would be bad at using fuel, right? The last thing we want is to be in the middle of a workout and to have our muscle cells not be good at using fuel. So when they can go through proper recycling via autophagy, they're gonna become more efficient and better. And full disclaimer, exercise increases autophagy even more than fasting does. Exercise increases autophagy more than a caloric deficit does, generally speaking, because you are really revving those motors and putting the stress on your body that triggers autophagy in the first place. But the key here is, increasing that protein intake. And we've seen in other literature that you can literally build muscle while being in a caloric deficit. You can literally burn fat and build muscle at the same time. It turns out that not only is this cool for body composition, but increasing your protein intake while reducing your caloric intake while exercising properly that is going to be just about the best possible thing you can do for longevity too. You build muscle mass, you build muscle strength, you increase, or you at least maintain your autophagy, and you're getting all these benefits that come along with it. Now, the most important thing we need to remember out of all of this, like I said before, is consolidating the protein surrounding the workout period or post-workout. That being said, I have done videos in the past that have talked about how you don't need to have protein post-workout. You can wait. And the truth is there because your anabolic signaling remains elevated for 24 or more hours after your workout. So you could work out and two hours later, three hours later, have your protein. The most important thing is that whatever and whenever that first meal is after your workout, make sure that is where the bulk of your protein comes in particularly for the day. So if you wanted to later on, three hours after a workout, have 75 grams of protein, you absolutely can because the science now supports it. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.